Hello folks and welcome to this video. So the other day I turned 48 and I realized that it's now been over 20 years since I first got tinnitus. I was 27 years old, it was 2002 and the world was a very different place back then. Over the years I've learned what I think are hard lessons, that's for sure, and some profound lessons for me personally at least, they've been very profound. And I wanted to share some of them with you today in the hope that they give you some food for thought and perhaps help you in some very, very small way as you progress on your journey with your tinnitus. So let's get into the lessons. So lesson number one, I've learnt the importance of being proactive. So being a professional musician and having chronic tinnitus has created a lot of challenges for me, as you might imagine, and I've had to figure out how to make those challenges more manageable and smaller. And I realized that the only way I was going to do that was by being proactive by seeking out solutions that work for me. And it wasn't easy because back in 2002 when I got tinnitus, I had dial-up internet, which I'm sure most of you will be old enough to remember. Some of you might be too young, but take it from me. Dial-up internet was slow and it was a hassle. But more importantly, the information that was available on the internet at the time about tinnitus was very jargon-like, very medical and just confusing to someone like me. So I had to figure stuff out like how to use earplugs, how to clean my ears, how loud is too loud, how to measure loud, um, how to measure sound, just a lot of stuff that I had to figure out for myself. And I realized that by being proactive, I could make those challenges smaller because I was seeking out solutions that work for me personally. And I, it's, it's something that I can also apply to other areas of my life. So now any challenges that I face, because of the lessons I've learned from my tinnitus, that I have to be proactive when faced with a challenge, I can apply that same thing to other challenges such as mental health, um, health in general, my work, etc. Lesson number two, and this is um, a personal lesson that I wanted to share with you. It's a big lesson that I've gone through. Actually, it's one of the biggest lessons that I've, I've learned. And as strange as this might sound, because of the immense struggles that I've had with my tinnitus over the years, I've become a better person. Sounds strange, but let me explain. When I first got tinnitus, I was 27 years old. I was very self-involved, very single-minded, um, very work-orientated. I was just a young guy, pretty self-involved in my own life. Over the years, I've been in some pretty dark places with my tinnitus and uh, been through some big struggles, and I've gone through them alone. Um, because, uh, like I say, the world was slightly different back then. And um, that feeling of being alone and being in a struggle and fearing that I might have to give up what I've dedicated my entire life to, which is music, the very real prospect that I might not be able to be a musician anymore, it changes you. It, it, it really changes you. It puts you in a, in a tough, tough place, and you have to figure it out. And when I came out of that, I was a better person because I could relate to other people's struggle more and I could have empathy for them and I could relate to their anxieties. I've had anxieties in the past about sound, how loud is too loud, so I can relate to them and it makes me a much better person and I'm immensely grateful for that because now I enjoy the idea of being of service to people. I genuinely enjoy the idea that I might be able to be of service to someone. It makes me feel more fulfilled as a person and I am immensely grateful for that lesson. Because lesson number three, I've learnt the power of negative thinking. So every day we hear about the power of positive thinking, gotta think positive, law of attraction, the secret, all that sort of stuff, which is all powerful and I think all true. But we don't often hear about the power of negative thinking. And I think I know why. I want to share this theory with you. I think it's because we can see the tangible results of positive thinking. I'm thinking positive, therefore I'm going to go for a jog. I'm thinking positive, therefore I'm going to go to the gym. I'm thinking positive, therefore I'm going to go and get that job, etc, etc. But we can't often see the tangible results of negative thinking. It's almost invisible. And that's what makes it sort of more powerful in a way, because we don't even realize just how powerful it is or we don't see the tangible results of it. So this is what I mean. 
when I in 2016 when I was going through a really really probably the worst spike I've ever been through I was not sleeping very well so that makes me emotionally vulnerable I felt very alone I went to see a professional and the first professional I saw just shrugged his shoulders so I feel alone and I feel scared because I think I might have to stop being a musician I've been a musician my entire life my dad's a musician you know this stuff is pretty pretty deep stuff you know so I do what anyone would have done I go on my computer and I type in tinnitus cure 2016 even though I knew there wasn't a cure at the time I just thought you know hopeful thinking you know and I'm already feeling vulnerable I feel very alone I can't find any musicians on the internet that are talking about tinnitus and I press send on my computer and woof, all this negative stuff comes at me quick powerful and it just all comes at you at once there's no cure they've done lots of trials and they've all failed a lot of people on the internet are struggling with tinnitus I can't find any musicians talking about tinnitus all this information is coming at me fast and I'm already very alone and very vulnerable you can see just how that information affects you right so I started to spiral in this negative spiral and it was sucking me in and all this negative thought was being attached to my tinnitus and the more emotion I attached to my tinnitus the worse that it got so what started out as a sound in my head now becomes this huge thing that's dominating my entire life but I want to flip everything I've just said 180 and the reason why I want to flip it is because I want to share something with you right now as I'm making this video I'm going I'm coming out of the second worst spike I've ever been through in my life almost as bad as the one I went through in 2016 it's been a huge spike in my tinnitus but the way that I've traveled through it has been a lot easier thank God than it was in 2016 and the only thing that's changed is the way I think about it and I mean this I, I really mean this nothing has changed my tinnitus is louder now than it was in 2016 but the way I think feel about it has changed and that's because I've understood the lesson of the power of negative thinking so let's flip everything on its side there's no cure there's still no cure in 2023 but last year there was over a thousand research papers published on tinnitus that's a lot of really smart people trying to figure this problem out a lot imagine how many people are involved in these studies a thousand papers were, were published last year we don't know when it's going to happen we but we're heading in the right direction nobody knows when but it's going in the right direction number two they've done lots of trials and they failed but every time they do a trial they learn new stuff they learn what works what do, well, what doesn't work so they try new stuff they they learn important information number three there's a lot of people struggling with in, uh, with tinnitus on the internet well that means I'm not so alone I'm not as alone as I thought I was there are lots of people with this problem there are lots of people sharing with empathy and therefore I don't feel as alone as I did back in 2016 and now there's a lot of musicians that are coming out talking about their tinnitus there wasn't back in 2016 trust me I, I was around I, I was looking for it but now there is so I know that there's lots of other musicians just like me in my position and if they can do it I can do it so you flip it all 180 and like I say the only way the only reason why I got through this spike easier than the one in 2016 2016 I was a mess I was a mess man and I felt so alone and it was difficult it was difficult it was really difficult actually um, but I'm not there now and I got through this spike and it's been much easier it's been scary it's been scary I'm, I'm it's been scary I'm not gonna lie I don't lie to anyone I don't tell I don't I don't lie I don't exaggerate and I don't lie it's not been easy but it's been a lot easier than it was in 2016 and I'm coming out of it 
and I'm, I'm on the right direction, I'm working and it's all good now. But the only thing that's changed, even though my tinnitus is louder now than it was then, is the way I think about it. All right, lesson number four. I've learned the importance of facing my anxieties. So over the years, I've had a lot of anxieties towards what's too loud, what's too long, um, how am I going to deal with going to shows, performing, mixing, uh, going to social events, going to parties, how am I going to deal with all that? Earplugs, do earplugs actually work? All sort of small anxieties that you face on a day-to-day -day level when you're sort of figuring this new situation out. But I've learned something about my anxieties towards sound. If I don't face those anxieties, what kind of life am I going to sort of give myself? If I don't push those anxieties and push the boundaries, I am reducing the size of my life. And that's not what I want to do. So I've got to face them and I've got to find ways to face them. And it's not easy, but I have found that by pushing the boundaries, I live a more normal life. And that makes the tinnitus more manageable. So I've had to sort of, you know, try it out. I've had to go out to gigs and see whether my earplugs actually work or not. And they do. And I've had to figure out, you know, how long can I stay at a party without wearing earplugs? And how long can I stay at a party with wearing earplugs when the music gets loud? So I've had to figure these anxieties, but by figuring these anxieties out, by pushing myself and facing those anxieties head on, it gives me a better life. It gives me more of a normal life, even though I have chronic tinnitus. And that's why I've learned it's so important to face those anxieties and to try and come up with solutions around those anxieties so that I can just live a normal life. And that leads me directly on to lesson number five, doing things I love. The more I do things I love, in my case, that's being a family man. It means um, my music, of course. Uh, it means being out with my friends, just doing normal stuff. But just that music, you know, music is a big part of my life. The more I do those things, the more my mind is distracted. And the more my mind is distracted, the less I'm thinking about tinnitus. And the less I'm thinking about tinnitus, the less energy it has and therefore the less importance it has in my life. So even though I've just been going through this really bad spike, the way that I've got through it is just by carrying on in it. And I know from experience, the more I do things I enjoy, the more things I do, I things, the more I do the things I love, the less energy my tinnitus has and the less burden it is on me. This is really real. <laughs> This is so real. I've just been getting through this crazy spike and I've just carried on as normal because it's important. I've got to live my life. I've got to live a fulfilled life. This is my life. This is my life in real time. This is no joke. So I've learned the importance of regardless of how bad my tinnitus is, I've got to do things I love because by doing things I love, I live a fulfilled life. And the darkness of tinnitus becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's really real. My, ten, my, my volume is louder now than it's ever been. Doing things you love is not going to change your volume. Nothing I say is going to change the loudness of your tinnitus. But what I do is I change the way I feel about it. And that helps me a lot. And lesson number six, the last lesson that I want to leave you with today, and this has been a, a particularly difficult lesson for me to learn. And the lesson is, I've learned that sometimes it's okay to put myself before others. Sometimes it's okay to put my needs before the needs of others. And I found this really difficult to apply and learn because I've always been a very shy, modest kind of guy, you know, down to earth, especially when I was younger. I was always like, don't mind me, you know, I don't want to cause any hassle that type of guy, you know, but because of the limitations and the challenges that I face with my tinnitus, sometimes I can't do that. Sometimes I can't put myself into situations that aren't to my best advantage. So, you know, if I'm with friends, sometimes it's okay for me to say, hey, you know what, I'd really prefer to go there than there because there is a bit loud or the sound isn't great. 
I've learned that it's okay to speak up for myself. And I found that really, really hard. You know, I've just not been good at that when I was younger, you know, to speak up for myself and say, hey, I've got these challenges. I want to be with you guys. I want to live a fulfilled life. I want to be out and about. But can we just, you know, go there rather than there, you know? Or if you're at a dinner party and the music, you know, maybe I've got sensitive ears because I've been mixing or whatever. Sometimes it's okay to say, hey, you know what? Could we just be a bit conscientious of sound? And while I do that, I've got to be kind to myself. I've always been very critical of myself, critical of my work, of the way I carry myself. And criticizing myself is just not going to help me in any way because I face this challenge. I've got to try and do things that help me. And criticizing myself is not going to be to my best advantage. So I've got to be kind to myself. So the lesson that I've learned is it's okay to speak up for myself because of my tinnitus to speak up for myself and put myself in the best situation so that I can live a fulfilled life and be out with my friends. And um, if I do that, I've got to be kind to myself. So there you go, folks. Those are the lessons I wanted to share with you today. I hope this video hasn't been too long. I hope these lessons have been interesting, but more importantly, I hope that they might be of some use to you. Perhaps if you're new to tinnitus or you're sort of going through a tricky phase. These lessons are lessons that I can apply to all areas in my life, not just tinnitus, and that's why I'm immensely grateful for them, although they've been very, very hard, hard learnt lessons. <laughs> but um, I think overall they make me a better person. They make me a stronger person. Absolutely, absolutely they make me a stronger person, that's for sure. And um, like I say, I, I, I like to be of use and of service to people, and that's that's probably the best lesson I've learnt. So... I really hope that they help you in some way. And um, thanks so much for watching. Like I say, I hope it hasn't been too long. I've got a website called helpmytinnitus.com where you can download my free PDF, Five Tips for Tinnitus. You can check out my other videos, my interviews. But for now, I want to say thanks so much for watching. I really hope this video was of use. And I'll see you on the next one.